Hey everybody, is it really the end of February already? Holy crap. Two months of 2022 gone and honestly the world is kind of a kind of junk right now. <laughs> uh, but we still have our own personal resolutions in Arkham Horror, the card game that we are striving for today, uh, today and for the rest of the year. And this is another resolution check-in. If you do not know, my resolution in 2022 was to play every investigator at least once in a campaign. You can see over here to my camera right, screen left. This is my little checklist I have so I can keep track of who I've played. The testings, uh, they are for standalones. I'm not gonna be talking about those in detail, but I'm also just trying to also give myself my own variety of life. But we have six new additions that we're going to be talking about this month for uh, who I've gotten, I've finished a campaign with or have gotten the majority of the way through a campaign with. Uh, and I'm at the point where I feel like the deck is at the at its highest function and we're going to see if any there's any new surprises, if I've learned anything about a character that I have not really enjoyed before, like a certain Jenny Barnes who is on this list. Uh, I'm curious to see how this goes. And uh, let's... Uh, talk about it. So we're going to start with uh, going uh, in not by alphabetical order, but by just a partner. So my first one here, I'm doing a Return to the Forgotten Age run, which is going to be starting on the channel in the near future. Uh, and this one, it actually started with uh, Jenny Barnes and a Marie Lambeau due to a patron's recommendation for what I should try out for my investigator combination for that campaign. It went terribly. Uh, they, Marie and Jenny, it was a mess. I was trying things out. I was like, I don't want to do just your stereotypical Marie Lambeau who's going to get clues and then Jenny's going to kind of just flex in both spots. I wanted to really focus on specific things. The whole thing went belly up and I said to myself and the people watching, I said, there's no way that I want to have this be my showcase for these investigators. My hope in playing this and this year resolution is to find what I can find to be the best version of that investigator. So I don't want to phone it in. I don't want to have this investigator just absolutely for me to just fail them because I'm not doing them in the best combination they could. So with that, I changed and I said, I want Jenny Barnes to be the best Jenny Barnes she could be. So I paired her with Silas instead, because I know Silas is, uh, he's, I know I'm good with him. I know I can play Silas really well. He's my favorite investigator in the game. And I don't even really need to think that much when it comes to playing Silas. So this is a Return to the Forgotten Age run. So lots of snakes. Uh, he's really good in it. He has four fist, four foot. His net is really good for dealing with the snakes you don't want to kill because you do get bombarded. And that's kind of like the problem with the Forgotten Age, that as soon as you have to start killing enemies, the first, all the jungle scenarios kind of just freaking suck. Uh, so we went with a, we, we started with a Dark Horse build. That's where Fire Axe lived. But we got out of that pretty quick. That's also, you can see where Madame LeBranche is. Uh, and instead, we just kind of have gone now, we've upgraded into two fire extinguishers. If you haven't played with this card, this card is really good at killing things. It's basically a machete that you never need to, like, jump through any hoops for. And this bottom action to evade all, automatically evade all enemies, and you can exile it to discard all enemies. It's very expensive because it costs 3 XP. But even just the automatically evading all enemies is a very strong part of this card. We have the backpack to find it. We've, uh, the Blood of Thirst has kind of gotten us a few times. That's why the XP is kind of low on this deck. But our first two experience were spent on an Unrelenting and we haven't looked back. This is just like a nice traditional Silas deck. I'm running the Expeditious Retreat for the first time because in the Return to the Forgotten Age, there's a certain enemy that can come out of the victory display and in multiples. So it's nice to have a plan for them. So this card, I haven't played with it yet. I was just added into it uh, to the point we are. But like Silas, is, he's pulling his weight. He's doing a good job, and uh, we're, he's rocking it. Next one over here, we have Silas's partner, Jenny. So, what did I want? I wanted to give Jenny a showcase, because I've, I, I've, I've played Jenny once before, ages ago, with her, uh, the Huntress one, the, her special from the, the book, right? Uh, I can't recall 
in a campaign where I've played the traditional um, searching for Izzy, the base stuff. I hate Izzy. First off, this lady, she's gotten away from me much more than I would like to. You'll probably notice early on that this is an Underworld support deck. In our review and also in other content, Underworld support is kind of like, it's got me. It's got, it has this little pincers around me and it's like, it's sucking the blood out of me and I'm like, yeah, I love this. This is really exciting. For some reason, this card just, it freaking gets me. I love the idea of playing with this card and I want to try it with as many places as I can. We are going to see it, spoiler alert, it's going to be coming up again on this list in the near future. So, uh, our deck size is down to 25. We got pretty, uh, no, sorry, that was another person. We have paranoia. But, yeah, okay, no, we actually got, I wanted to build a big, <laughs> um, money deck. I was like, I want to build a big money Jenny deck, and I want to play the black fan. That, unfortunately, kind of went sideways when earlier on, yeah, so, yeah, no, this one is, what because we started with an indebted in our, uh, for this one so like it was like okay that's fine but then in the campaign we got a paranoia so i had to mulligan out now bryn said he gave me the advice let me just open this that in a big money that's where investments come in really good if you get this but so i could have got an adaptable into investments in order to kind of work against this weakness that i got the the paranoia but instead, I decided I'm going to go for go all more in on the money spending Jenny. The downside is this well connected is kind of awkward because this was my first upgrade. Because I think if you're going to go big money, well connected level three is just really good. At, if it brings all of your bumps down one resource, that now means that eight you get plus two as opposed to only plus one, right? Yeah, didn't go too well. Didn't go too well. Luckily, though, this spending money Jenny can live around... She lives kind of around four money quite a bit because we kind of want to keep the counter espionage going. And uh, it's still even good. A plus one on tests that matter is kind of okay. Lola and lockpicks obviously do a lot of work. We have the goose. And the goose was part of my plan from originally... And we weren't going to draw cards. Um, and that's why there's no lucky cigarette case. And why there's no... Uh, there is this one perception which shouldn't really be here anymore. But, like, the whole point is that we... We weren't going to be drawing cards. And, honestly, the deck... It works. It works. It's not exactly exciting. Uh, and Jenny is kind of just... Um, She's kind of just still fine to me. Like, she's still, like, probably a C-tier investigator in my own personal ranking system. She doesn't get the glow-up that Rita had, where Rita was like, okay, Rita is looking really nice. Rita is, she's, she's powerful, she's tricky. She went from a C or a D even, I don't even remember what I had her at, but she went to a B-tier for me. Rita is nice and consistent now, and she has, if she gets all the pieces, she becomes really good, which to me is like the B tier. They need a lot of work to get going. Jenny needs a lot of work in my mind to get really going. Those threes are all awkwards. If I get the goose out with Lola, we're rolling. We're rolling, right? We're, we're killing it. Um, and Savant has also been really nice. Like this Jenny, she's doing stuff, but she's not doing to the stuff where I would like... To the point where I would make it be really exciting for me to want to play her again. She's kind of just Jenny. I do want to try the Jenny that actually is big money Jenny. Unfortunately, uh, that probably won't be until 2023. <laughs> because I have a lot of other investigators I need to play first. But I do want to play a big money Jenny and not get disrupted by a paranoia. And once again, you still could, with investments, take advantage of it. But I, at this point, I was like, no, we're just going to adapt. We're just going to adapt. And, like, we're still functioning really well. This Another Day, Another Dollar is not that it, like, it just balances out our indebted, right? We'll probably get one more before the campaign is done. But it's working, but it's not exactly bombastic. And it does not excite me 
the way that Rita does now. Rita is really good. Jenny is still just... Jenny, okay, Rita is... Rita is good. Jenny is okay. That's kind of still how I'm feeling about Jenny after playtesting her here. All right, well, that is it for my Return to the Forgotten Age run. Let's move on to something that's, uh, I've, uh, it's been strange. I've, uh, been playing offline. What the frick? Is that allowed? First off, am I allowed to play a game offline? Yeah, I, 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 uh, I decided I wanted to, I needed to get my, my, get some more investigators in, because I need to, like, average, like, around five investigators a month. Otherwise, I'll fall way behind. So I was like, okay, we're going to play some offline and I'm going to grind out some of the investigators that I've played a lot on the channel and are not particularly interesting. So here is a Nathaniel Cho deck. Wow. <laughs> this is just Nathaniel Cho. Uh, he's doing great. He kills things really well. His upgrading is kind of just right. I love sweeping kick in him. This is my first time playing a Nathaniel Cho with Sweeping Kick, and it is really good. It's a good time. It's the more just like kill spells Nathaniel gets, the better. But as you can see, it kind of just makes the whole thing a little bit. I mean, Nathaniel Cho, he has one speed. He has one speed. His hand, his his resource economy is great because he just like only plays things when he has to. Uh, his his whole hand is always loaded. Like I'm commonly discarding cards at the end of my turn. Uh, we're running the handcuffs to try it out against uh, what's his nuts, Tommy Malloy. You know Tommy Malloy. What's his nuts? Uh, I've put him in handcuffs once and it actually felt good. Uh, I've killed him a few other times. It's uh, it's it's honestly hot enough tech to deal with Tommy that I think it's worth it even as a one of. Because if you don't see it and it's not in play, you can just kill Tommy with your fists. As opposed to the law. Uh, yeah, I know. I think it's, uh, I mean, it's a Nathaniel Cho deck. It's functioning. Nathaniel Cho kills like an absolute mother. He's probably one of the best uh, killers in the game. He kills very efficiently. Uh, second to probably only Tony Morgan. Nathaniel Cho's really good. He's, I like playing him even if his deck building is really boring. Because when you just absolutely just uppercut a, a Biaki into the moon. Damn, does it feel good. All right. Uh, quick here. We're going on to my, the partner for Nathaniel Cho was Daisy Walker. Uh, so I was trying out, I listened to Travis, where Travis, you know, he gave me this shrewd analysis ages ago, and he said cards that you need to play more. And he was like, you got to do more upgrades than just Dream Diary. So I said, fine, I'm going to try the Forbidden Tome in Daisy Walker. I like playing Daisy. She's very strong. You get an old book of lore out, and you basically just become unstoppable. Uh, so I thought I'd try out these Forbidden Tomes, and uh, it's kind of like... The game plan for this deck is really simple. Load up your hand with cards. Wow, I'm breaking the game here. New, new archetype that no one's ever heard of before. Uh, we're going to load our hands up with cards, and then we're going to have the Ariadne's Twine and Eon Chart out there and we're just going to like spend our actions investigating loose actions we're going to uh we rolled the discover one clue and we also rolled the uh, move damage over and this move damage one i actually think it's nicer than the clue one in this deck and that might sound a little bit stupid and honestly it kind of is a little bit stupid but uh, this is actually, like, we have, it allowed me to play a bit more recklessly, right? So, Nathaniel Cho could get punched a few times by something that would normally kind of hurt. Uh, and instead, uh, it becomes, uh, I was able to, like, it would be, like, damage that I wouldn't want to take. But now with this Forbidden Tome Dark Knowledge, I can move that and then potentially kill enemies with it. It's allowed me to like be a little bit more reckless with my, my Nathaniel Cho place and then also with my Daisy place. She could just get punched by an Acolyte or she can move to a location with an Acolyte. Take a, a or take an attack from that Acolyte, then that damage can then move to it. To the, or like damage that was already on her can move to that Acolyte and kill her. Kill that Acolyte. It's been just really 
kind of, um, it impressed me more than I thought it was going to. The clue one obviously, like, works, but we're already getting so many clues and efficiency from the Eon chart that it's like, that's kind of yummy. Um, the Ari Ari Ariadne's Twine and the Eon chart are just absolutely killing it. Like, absolutely just, it's disgusting. <laughs> yeah, so this one you can, uh, Exhaust it, move one secret from an asset you control to your resource pool or, or as a resource or vice versa. So this one we are doing the resource pool. Uh, so we move a resource from a resource pool to uh, an asset as a secret. That's the vice versa. May, like, for some reason I always fear I'm playing this wrong. But I've heard other people say that this is what they do with it. So I'm like, I don't, for some reason this card confuses the hell out of me. But um, that's what I'm doing. And if I am somehow wrong, like my brain tries to convince me I am every time I read this, uh, that would be a shame, but that's life. Uh, the one thing about this deck is that you obviously, you want to hit a whole old, for old book of lore ASAP. So that's why we have the two research librarians. We have the Miskatonic funding as well, which you can see, which allows us to ultimately, the goal is to get uh, at the very least two lab assistants out. Because this game is, this deck's kind of slow going to get to the point where my Forbidden Tomes are active. The Forbidden Tomes are cute, but I think to really get the full impact from them, you kind of like have to be more all in on it. This Ariadne's Twine and Eon Chart game plan, while very good, I feel like it's kind of like actually counterproductive to what I'm doing. Or I could just even add more card draw. Yeah, that's what I mean. Like, I think this just needs a bit more card draw to be fully in at 100%. Like, while I'm taking advantage of it, there was only like one or maybe two scenarios where I got to do it for completely for free, right? But the deck's still obviously kicking ass. Like, the deck is still really good. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm having a good time with it. But both this and the Nathaniel Cho deck are kind of just boring. So that's why uh, I'm doing those ones offline. Okay. So, good. This deck's still here. So this next deck, the Zoe Samaras deck that I'm going to show. This one, I'm actually, this is not the deck, my deck first. So this is the 21 Thumb Street Guide by the user Start With The Name. Sometimes I like to look... Uh, around ArkhamDB to find inspiration because I am a deck builder that focuses on one thing and that is efficiency. I don't really think of the crazy stuff that you can do. I just think, is this card the Justin level of efficient? And if not, why am I even looking at it? So they have this sick, uh, Star With The Name has this sick underworld support deck that goes out with the Cyclopean Hammer. My thought process was, no, that's boring. I'm sick of the hammer and I don't want to play it anymore. So what's better than the hammer? Well, it's the Holy Spear. What? The Holy Spear that killed Jesus? Uh, so we're pl I'm playing this one in Wonderland. It is our enemy killer, obviously. Uh, it does have the Sixth Sense to help get clues, as well as the Holy Rosary. This is like the... The spear is less here as the payoff to a bless mechanic because we're not really like doing too much bless. We're kind of just using the top ability to get plus two and plus one. Then if we ever can get the bottom ability, it becomes really nice. So we're not like looking to get the bottom build attack consistently, but if we do ever hit it, that's nice. So... Um, going back to start with the names deck, this thing has, uh, this deck has a really, uh, important part here where we do the stick to the plan and we grab the astounding revelation. So you can see right here, it's, we can, we grab the ever vigilant, the astounding revelation, and then the, on the hunt. Sorry, not, yeah, yeah, no, sorry. We grab, we're going to, I'm going to get there. We're going to get there. Uh, we grab the Ever Vigilant, the On the Hunt, and the Prepared for the Worst. While we're searching, we play the Astounding Rev to get two additional resources. And then this brings our deck size down really small. Teeny tiny. Which means that if we don't draw the Holy Spear in our opening hand, we probably drew the backpack, which means we're going to find the Holy Spear. Can you miss? Absolutely, I have missed. I had all my items in the bottom half of my deck. That was kind of a nightmare. Um, but it's uh, it hits pretty consistently to the point where you're going to get at least the Blade or the Holy Spear. 
And then you'll be able to find your other stuff pretty easily because you also have a prepared for the worst as backup on your stick to the plan. Uh, Holy Rosary is really nice in this deck. I've actually, in the, in the Wonderland, which is going to be coming out on the channel in the near future, I actually got everything. I, I, I got like eight bless tokens in from this, which is kind of crazy. Uh, other bless payoffs we have are some... They're not in here yet. They're down here. Yeah, yeah. I actually even even had added the, the Righteous Hunt, which was another way for us to get blesses in the deck. We have Attempt Fate to get blesses in, but really, actually, the Holy Rosary is really good at just getting us there. Let's just test five on Treachery Tests, which is probably going to put at least two in. Like I said, we got eight in on my last time that I played this. This deck has been doing really good, and it's really consistent. Even if you hit just the Enchanted Blade to start... It's going to do really well at to the point where then you'll eventually find your Holy Spear and, you know, start stabbing. Um, other fun cards. I just added the Enchant Weapon. I haven't actually played with it yet. But, like, this deck is pretty much, like, hit its function. I'm not really exactly worried about um, seeing how more it's going to shape out. I think this card is just... This deck is just... It's doing it. It's really good. Once again, this was based on the 21 Thump Street, I believe it was called. Uh, it's, uh, here, let me just, let me get it open again. Because if I'm going to talk about the deck, I should credit the freaking deck. Yeah, 21 Thump Street. So you can kind of see very similar. I was less on the David Renfield plan that the original deck was. But, like, the deck uh, is kind of the same philosophy. Uh, different kind of colors, too, for our splashes. I did not run the Sledgehammer. Uh, I went for a Quick Thinking instead, which is kind of like a weird choice in the Goon deck. But because I also have the Sixth Sense, it's actually been kind of nice to, you know, use there as well. Uh, one last card that I want to just give a big special shout out to is this Gang Up. This card base is a plus two, plus two for three. That's all right. However... We have uh, a Sixth Sense, an Enchanted Blade, a Medical Student. These things are, especially the Sixth Sense, I will just play pretty commonly if I find it. So this thing actually hits for, not on the hunt, uh, this Gang Up hits three for three pretty consistently every time. I'm very impressed with this uh, Gang Up. It's been nice. On the hunt three is nice as well. Uh, works really good for Zoe. Yeah, especially off the stick to the plan. Just the time where you're like, all right, I'm ready to kill something. Let me find something to kill and get some money out of it in the process. Okay. Who on earth are we playing with uh, Zoe, you may ask? Well, you don't even need to ask. It says uh, right here, Minty Fan. Right at the top of the second call of the second side. Minty fan, min digs through the trash. So this is one that I wanted to play. Let me scroll down so you can see the deck. That I wanted to play because everyone thought I did min dirty in my uh, ranking for it. Because I gave her a B. And I still mostly stand by that B. Maybe leaning a bit towards A. The point now where this deck is loaded with all this experience, I'm not going to deny for a second that it is powerful. It's very strong. Um, but I feel, and I actually even felt this earlier on in the campaign, that without all of my pieces of my puzzle, Min was still just kind of weak. So, like... I still think she's... I think I was ultimately wrong to give her a B. But I'm leaning like maybe low A. Maybe high B for her still. Now that's enough about Min. This deck is particularly juicy. Uh, the Ice Pick scavenging stuff works really well. The Scroll of Secrets 2 has been... It's been very nice to play with. Especially when you scavenge it out of the discard pile. Like, that's, that's kind of juicy. Uh, it allows you to bury your weaknesses, because you can just keep putting good cards on top until you can discard your weakness from the bottom. Uh, and then if you just keep kind of, like, cycling them out and scavenging for other ones, uh, it's kind of nice. The only problem is Min's 
some you gotta still succeed by two on the scavenge. And with Min like being at four, five with Jeremiah Kirby, it still misses a lot of the time. So like this is ultimately like if Min had five book printed, obviously she would be busted, right? Like she'd be very strong. But like her stats are still making me kind of crave more power from Min. Uh, but once again, this is not me saying that this deck is bad. This is obviously a very good, very hardworking version of Min. And like when all the pieces are going together, you are very strong. Um, but it's the pieces, not the whole. Uh, this Jeremiah Kirby, I, I, as you can see, I built my deck to be, uh, so we have 15 odd cards. And then we have uh, four uh, we have four uh, even cards, and then the rest are skills. So I've actually been drawing pretty consistently three off Jeremiah Kirby here. Uh, I could have been using William Webb, but I think the book, I, I value the book boost quite a bit. Uh, obviously, what's another big winner here is the Glimmer of Hope. It's been really nice. And then, like, the quietly, but also not so quietly, the strongest card in this deck is easily Sharp Vision. This card's absolutely incredible. I was lucky enough that I got two Elder Signs when I had it committed, and that was kind of juicy. Like, probably the one of the most powerful I felt. I was just like, sure, I'll play another Sharp Vision. Sure, I'll play another Sharp Vision. Sure, I'll play another Sharp Vision. Uh, it's really nice. Once you get your Ice Pick cycling, and you can just, like, keep... Grab the other... But, like, that's for opening a door. That's not for stabbing someone. That's using it as a key. Uh, it's really nice. Schaffner's catalog is also kind of, is just just good, just gravy. It's working really well with uh, Zoe as well to help her pay for her weapons and all that. Or even her rosary and her necklace. Uh, Unrelenting obviously is still good here. It's by no means uh, like Silas or Amanda busted, but it's still just consistent and good. Uh, I think I talked about a Glimmer of Hope. This card's just, it's my favorite card to see when I draw it. I love drawing a Glimmer of Hope because then that means I'm going to be getting them all back very soon. Yeah, no, like the deck is very fun to play. The deck is very strong. And I think it's a, I think you guys were definitely right where uh, I did not, I have not played this style of Min. And it's obviously um, great. It's strong. You guys were right. I had a really good time doing it. Uh, and I'm excited to finish the Wonderland campaign uh, coming up next bit. I think we have like three scenarios left. But like as you can see the deck is kind of at the point where it's supposed to be. I'm starting to put in things like Studious now. We have a few things like the Deduction, the Perceptions, the Test of Will. This Ancestral Knowledge isn't going to make it. It's probably not going to make the cut. That was just like, that was just my what if theory crafting. But uh, yeah, no, the deck's really fun. If you ask, yes, I did Ridden in the Stars blind and hit a good skill once. It was the best, but that's obviously here to work with the Scroll of Secrets. It actually has not worked with the Scroll of Secrets, so this should be out of here by now. But it is also just an unexpected courage, so I'm keeping it in for that reason. And also for the dream of seeing the dog in the sky. But yeah, really fun deck. Uh, really, uh, I've enjoyed how strong it is, and I really appreciate your guys' recommendation because it is a really good time to play this one. So, that is now two months into February, into 2022. January and February, we have a bunch of these all figured out. But man, do we still got a lot left to go. So, at the end of March, I'm going to see you guys again for another resolution update. Uh, if there's any investigators you're very eager to see me play, or if you have any thoughts about the investigators that I talked about today, uh, let me know in the comments below. I would love to hear from you. Consider liking and subscribing. If you have not subscribed and if you have not liked the video yet, we really would appreciate it. It helps the channel out a bunch. And a huge thank you to all of our patrons for supporting the channel. You guys are incredible and you mean the absolute world to me. You allow me to continue to make more Arkham Horror content for you guys. And it's my favorite thing to do. So thank you so much for watching. Have a good one. I'll see you next month for another resolution check-in. Uh, and as always, GG's.